In this video, we are going to discuss the set identities, and then moving on to the next video, we will talk about how to prove them. So we have several set identities that we need to know, and these words should look familiar to you because we did talk about these in predicate logic. But we have identity laws, kind of like the additive identity or multiplicative identity. We're saying if I take set A, I take the union of that with the empty set, my result is set A. And that should make sense because we're essentially saying, you know, something plus zero is whatever you started with, which is the additive identity. If I take A intersect U, so this is very different, we're saying A combined with everything from U, but it's the intersection, so it's only things involved or that are contained in both A and U, it would make sense, again, that I end up with A because it's only elements contained in both A and the universe, which would be just those in A. Domination law, I have A union the universe, which would of course be the universe, because remember what I'm looking at with A union is anything that's in either one of those sets, and the universe would be everything that I'm dealing with or everything that I'm concerned with. Or I could say A intersect the empty set would be the empty set because remember in the intersection it must belong to both sets and the only thing that belongs to both sets in A and the empty set is the empty set. So there's nothing that is contained in both. Idempotent laws, A union A. Well, that makes sense. A union A would just be a, so I'm taking the same set combined with itself, what's in both sets, or what's in either set, A. Uh, same thing, what's in both sets of A intersect A would still be A, so it's the same idea. And the complementation law, if I'm looking for the complement of not A, we would of course end up back at A because if I took A and I took the complement and then I took the complement of that, I would end up back where I started. So it's kind of like adding five to a value then subtracting five, you end up back where you started. Looking at our next law, the commutative law. Commutative law says if you have A union B, you're going to end up with the same solution as B union A, essentially saying it doesn't matter the order in which you take the union, and it doesn't matter the order in which you take the intersection, because those concepts are not dependent on order. The associative law says again if I have A union B union C, it's going to be the exact same thing as A union B and then union C. So in this one, obviously I'm taking the union of BC first. Here I'm taking the union of AB first, but really it all ends up to be the same thing, which hopefully makes perfect logical sense. And the same would hold true if I were doing the intersection. It really wouldn't matter the order in which I did the intersection or the order in which I did the union. I'm still going to end up with that same set of values that either is in all or any, I guess, of A, B, and C, or is in each A, B, and C. And the distributive law, if I have A intersect B union C, that is going to give me the same value as A intersect B union A intersect C. So again, I'm really just distributing A intersect to both values on the inside and leaving that union exactly where it was. And of course, we can also say A union B intersect C would be the same thing as A union B intersect A union C. The last of our identities, the first one is De Morgan's Laws. So we are very familiar with De Morgan. 
Um, the first law says that if I have A union B, but I have the complement of A union B, that is going to be the same thing as the complement of A, or not A, intersect not B. So I've drawn a very easy looking Venn diagram over here. And I just want to show using both sides of this. So A union B um, would be one, two, and three. And so not A union B would be just the value of four, which is on the outside. So A union B would be anything, well, I'm sorry, this is A, this is B. So A union B would be anything in either A, which would be one, two, or B, which would be two, three. So the number's one, two, three. And not A union B would be the value of four. If I looked then at not A, so not A would be the numbers three and four. Whoops, I'm just gonna put three comma four. Um, intersect anything that is not B. So essentially we're adding, or we're, sorry, the intersect of not B and B is two, three. So not two, three is one and four. And the intersect says, I need anything that's in both of those. And so in that case, that would be four. So four equals four. So again, you can kind of use a Venn diagram to help you visualize what's going on if you're not just wanting to um, memorize, but to actually understand exactly what De Morgan was going for here. The other De Morgan law says A intersect B or the complement of that is equal to the complement of A union, the complement of B. So again, A intersect B in my picture is the number two. And so not A intersect B would be one, three, and four. If I then look at A union B, or sorry, not A, union not B, so A is one, two, so not A is three, four, and union just means I'm adding. Not So B is two, three, not B is one, four. And so if I were to rewrite this, I would have one, three, and four, and I don't have to write four twice because even though it happened twice, I just write it once. So that's giving you just a visual example of De Morgan's laws. Absorption laws, I've got A, union, a intersect B is just the same as A. So again, if I wanted to look up here at my picture, my very simple picture, A intersect B, well, let's try this again. A is one and two, and I'm saying union A intersect B, well, the only thing that's in both A and B is two, and so the union would be one and two, which yes, is the exact same thing as A. The other, oh, I should have written that up here, one, two, which is the same as A. And my other absorption law says A intersect A union B is the same as A. So same concept, I'm saying A, which is one, two, intersect, so intersect says it has to be in both, a union B is one, two, three, because that's anything that is in A or in B. And the intersect says it has to be in both, and that includes one and two, which of course is the same as set A. And the complement laws, again, pretty straightforward. If you have A union not A, that should be everything in your universe. And if you have A intersect, not A, you shouldn't have a darn thing in common. It should be the empty set. So in our next video, we are going to take a look at these set identities, or just a few of them. And we're gonna talk about different strategies in which to prove them. We're going to do the same example three times using three different methods. And then I will leave any of the other set identities for you to prove on your own.